Right now let's take a look at creating a smartphone layout. So I'm going to do that essentially the same way that I created my second layout. But I'll go to that second layout and choose from the flyout menu create alternate layout and that way it'll use the previous layout to create this new one. So it'll take advantage of all the artwork that I resized and repositioned. I'm going to make this one a lot smaller and I'm just going to generically call it smartphone and I'm going to use the iPhone 8 specifications because I think it's kind of a good generic setup. So that's 375 pixels by 667 pixels. I'll click OK. It's going to copy all that stuff for me. And now if I go in and look, and again I'll hit the W key, and you can see it didn't really do much work for me, but I will go ahead and hit Command A to select all, hold Command and Shift, and just scale this down as much as I can to fit on the page. And this is no small feat. There's not much room between the pages. What you'll see in the liquid layout video is this is so much easier if you take some time to set up liquid layout rules. There we go getting it relatively close to that size and get things in order. I'm just going to shrink things down. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. You might do more planning, but sometimes I need to just see these and work it out on screen. So I'm going to do a little bit of that for you just so you can see what that looks like. It's not a magic process. It's just something I'm eyeballing and, and seeing what I can do. Again, I don't love this empty space. There might be something else I put in that layout, but this is enough to get a sense of the position of items. Now, what I might do is make this more dramatically different uh, than the one above. So I might take this item and move it to the top. Maybe I'll take the transparency off of this, but, uh, Maybe dial down the tint a bit so it's not so stark. That way we'll see the difference when we get to the output. Now we've got three layouts. In5 is going to treat these differently than our two layout export. Because those two layouts had matching dimensions that were simply rotated, in5 used the orientation to decide when to swap the layouts so you could see either one. Now that we've got three layouts with differing dimensions, In5 is going to use the width of the browser to decide when to switch the layouts. So you see that in the output momentarily. One thing I want to mention before we export is that again, when I created this new layout, I didn't do my due diligence and go in and change the animation. So it's probably not going to look very good in the output. And a lot of times what InDesign does when it copies pages is it screws up the timing of animations. So if I go to this first page and look at the timing panel, let me hide that paragraph panel. You can see responsive cover is first, two rectangles, and then text. If I go to the second page, which was merely just a copy, right? It's, it's lost all the timing aspects of the animation. The animation still plays, but I move the items around. I don't necessarily want them to play the same way. So that's going to be a bit of chaos. Just be aware when you create new layouts, if you've got animation, you have to stitch things back together. And you might even want to change the animations like I would in this document. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of. Now let's go up to the In5 menu. This time, let's just use the Easy Export Wizard. I'm going to choose the modern digital format that's the equivalent of the slider fade in. And you can see at the bottom it says responsive layouts detected and applied. I'll click next. I'll say pixel perfect text. Next. And I'm okay with this title for now. I'll click export. And it's going to go through and render all the pages from the different layouts and stitch them together. And by default, when I use the easy export wizard, it's going to add the image optimization for me. It's going to shrink things down because there are more assets in the responsive layout, and this will actually shrink them so they load faster in the browser. When it's done, I'm going to open it in the browser and see those chaotic animations I was talking about. It's used best fit, but it figures out that the tall layout should be fit to width. So there is the big one. 
there's the medium one, and let's get all the way down to the small one. And there's our small one. And like I said, the animations are a little wonky because we didn't go in and repair those after creating the alternate layout. But now you can see we have three different layouts and they've scaled automatically for us to the window. So we've got a fully responsive experience, total control of the design and InDesign. And one more thing to note, because I use the Easy Export Wizard, it tacks some things on for me like this viewer display bar at the bottom. And so that shows me the pages. And actually I'll show you if I scale down, it changes the page thumbnails to fit the layout. So I get down, I'll get down into the uh, phone layout and you can see it gives me the phone layout there. And if I get bigger, it turns into the vertical tablet and it turns into the desktop or the, the landscape tablet. So that's pretty darn cool. So the combination of the responsive layouts and the desktop scaling creates a fully responsive experience it's fairly easy to set up. You can do it all visually in InDesign. If you want to get item level control on really specific elements, say you have something you want to stay in one corner of the screen no matter how much it's scaled, then you can do that with liquid layouts. So I'll show you that in the next video, how to pin things and make it liquid, and then combine liquid with responsive, and compare no scaling with scaling with liquid layout, and then compare all those to mixing each one with responsive layouts. So you have a lot of options in terms of controlling all those items. So take a look at the liquid layout video if you want to see the comparison of all of them and see what liquid layout does, especially in the context of responsive layouts.